Welcome back to the channel guys and to the third and final part of our holiday grilling series. Today we are cooking up a whole beef tenderloin. So far we've done a twice smoked ham, a prime rib, and if you haven't seen those videos yet, check them out. I'm going to link them in the corner and in the description below. And so today we're going to focus on the beef tenderloin. Last week prime rib was king and this is the Rolls Royce of beef. It is super tender, one of the most expensive cuts, and I'm gonna show you a super easy way of making it. One of the reasons why beef tenderloin is so well liked and perfect for the holidays is that because once it's cooked, it is super tender and the meat just kind of melts in your mouth. That's one of the reasons why it's also super expensive. Now, what it makes for in texture and tenderness, it kind of lacks in the flavor department. So we're gonna make a delicious red wine sauce to go with it to really amp up the flavor and make it super delicious. I picked this guy up from Costco. This is about five pounds or just under and it costs about hundred fifty dollars so uh it's expensive can be a little bit intimidating i think people see the price tag they don't want to risk you know buying an expensive piece of meat like this and messing it up at the house so can i'll show you my way of doing it where it's uh, pretty straightforward simple and it comes out delicious every single time so i'm going to start by taking this out of the uh, packaging just cut this guy down and then just be careful with any juices that might come out Oh yeah, look at that. Now that is a nice looking piece of meat. I'm going to start by patting it dry, just like we always do. All right. This is what my beef tenderloin looks like from the packaging. Now this one from Costco has already been peeled, which means there was another layer on top that they removed and uh, kind of cleaned up for us. As you can see on this end, it tapers down a little bit. And on this side, there's another piece attached, which is called the heel. Now the main section that we're focusing on is right here. This is where your filet mignon steaks are cut from. This is really the prized section of the uh, beef tenderloin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this heel. We're gonna trim off this end and we'll fold in this tapered edge to make it nice and uniform. I'm gonna tie it all together so it cooks evenly and it will make for a much better final product. We're gonna start by removing this heel and as you can see, there's a seam or kind of a layer of fat that attaches this part to the main beef tenderloin. So just take your knife and you can just gently cut and start to separate the two. And as you can see, it'll start to peel off on its own. There we go, just like that. Flip it around, cut it right here. Don't worry too much if you cut off, you know, too big of a piece or not enough. We're gonna save all these trimmings. And this is the part that we cut off. So this is the heel. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. And as you can see, there's another edge that tapers down a little bit. And I'm just gonna cut this guy straight off. So what I'm gonna do with these two parts, I'm gonna cube these up into small bite-sized pieces, throw them into a Ziploc bag, and then these are perfect for a stir fry or cooking them up in the morning with like steak and eggs, really for anything, but uh, definitely save these because this meat is still very tender and delicious. And so now we have this side left to work with. And again, this one tapers down. So all that I'm going to do is just fold it inside, just like so. And you wanna fold it up until the point where this whole kind of beef tenderloin log is the same size from end to end, just like this. So now when this goes on the grill, it's gonna cook evenly from one side to the other, and you get this super nice presentation piece when it's ready. Now, when it comes to tying this up, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can just take some butcher's twine, cut a couple pieces and just tie it all the way around. So again, it holds its shape and cooks evenly, but let me show you the way that I like to do it. Start by taking your tenderloin and putting it this way, kind of facing towards you. Now take your butcher's twine. We're gonna keep it one long piece. Go under the end here. Okay, we're gonna tie a knot. And you wanna tie these firmly, but you don't have to tie it super hard. There we go. So just like this, you wanna have a little piece sticking out. Next, we're gonna take more twine, cross, make a loop, and then go underneath the tenderloin. You wanna make these, uh, loops every, I don't know, inch and a half or so. Again, so it cooks evenly and then just kind of pull it nice and tight so you can see it is uh, holding it together. And then just take your time with this. Again, you wanna have a really nice final product going for this nice presentation, so don't rush it. And then just continue making these loops. And now we'll just pull it, 
pull it tight. There we go. See, so this is kind of what you're going for. Again, about an inch and a half or so apart. And we'll continue on. Loop, pull it under. Now, when you get to the uh, part that we tucked underneath, make sure that uh, you tie it to the main piece or the main section. See, like here, it fell out. So I'm going to tuck this edge right under. And again, we'll pull it tight. There we go. And our final loop. Look at that. Look how nice that looks. So now that we are at the edge of our tenderloin, I'm just going to rotate it upside down. Take your butcher's twine. Make sure you have enough to go to the uh, end of your tenderloin. We're going to cut it here at the end. And now take your butcher's twine and we're just going to go underneath each section. We'll make a loop just like there is on the other side. There we go. And we'll pull it nice and tight. This process takes a little bit of practice. Uh, again, you can just tie this up using individual pieces of twine, but uh, I really like this presentation. This has that nice professional look to it, even though I'm not a professional. And now we'll take the piece that we started with and we'll just tie our knot here at the end, cut off the excess. And our tenderloin is tied up. Look how nice this looks. Nice and even. All right, now we can uh, season up our beef tenderloin. So I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of olive oil this will act as our binder and for the seasoning i'm going with my steak rub so it's a great mix of salt pepper garlic it's uh, going to be perfect on our tenderloin get the edges this is looking really good and last part before this goes on the grill i'm going to put in my temperature probe so this is the uh, meter plus and we're going to put this right in the center of our tenderloin, Oop, just like that. So this will monitor the internal temperatures of the grill so I don't overcook it. And now we are ready to hit the grill. I've got the egg set up for indirect cooking. It's cruising at about 250 degrees. So I'm gonna place my tenderloin right in the center, just like that. I'm gonna close the lid and I'm gonna leave it on and cook it until it reaches about 110 degrees internal. Then we're gonna remove the plate setter, crank up the heat, sear it for just a couple minutes on each side, and then it's gonna be ready. Beef tenderloin is on the egg, so now we can get started on our red wine glaze. And this is super easy to make and will add so much more flavor to our beef tenderloin. So I'm gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of butter into my skillet. We'll add some shallot and some minced garlic. I'm gonna bring this inside, put it on the stove over medium heat and saute for a couple minutes until everything softens up and is nice and fragrant. All right, so this is what you're going for with your shallots and garlic, softened up, translucent, smelling amazing. So now I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients. So I've got some balsamic vinegar. We'll add a couple sprigs of thyme, one cup of uh, beef broth, one cup of red wine. We're using this Robert Mondavi Cabernet. And we'll add about a tablespoon or so of my steak seasoning. Okay, mix this up and I'm going to bring this back inside on the stove. And we'll cook this for about 10-15 minutes over medium heat. Simmer it until it reduces down, thickens up, and this will be perfect on our beef tenderloin. All right, so this is what you're going for. Our sauce reduced down, thickened up, and now I'm going to strain our sauce. So just get rid of all the solids. Ooh, there we go. Just press this down. Again, super easy to make. We're putting this on the uh, beef tenderloin, but you can put this on any, any protein, really, any beef. Beef tenderloin hit 110 internal. So let's uh, remove this from the grill. Ooh. All right, check this out. It is looking nice. Now I'm going to bring this inside, loosely covered with foil. I'm gonna let it rest for a good 15 minutes before we sear it off. I'm also going to prep the big green egg for searing. So what I'm gonna do is remove the grate and the plate setter. So this is what creates that indirect cooking zone on the grill. We'll give the coals a little shake, a little stir. Ooh, look at that. 
I'm going to put the grate directly over the coals. I'm going to leave the lid open for a couple of minutes. It's going to get nice and hot and it was at about 500 degrees. We'll sear the tenderloin about a minute or so on each side and it's going to be delicious. Beef tenderloin has rested. The big green egg is nice and hot. So let's sear it off. Again, we're just going for about a minute or so per side. Whew, look at that. Coals are super hot. So we're just going to go directly on the grate. Oh yeah, about a minute or so on each side, create that beautiful crust, that nice color, and we'll pull it off and uh, our tenderloin will be ready to eat. And don't forget to get the uh, sides, so just gonna go on the uh, side like this. You can hold it with your tongs if it's uh, falling over. All right, beef tenderloin is done and ready. Now I rested this for 15 minutes after that indirect cook part, so this is ready to slice. Check it out, beautiful crust on the outside. It is smelling amazing, nice and soft. So uh, yeah, let's just cut right into it and uh, see how we did. Before I slice into it, I'm gonna remove the uh, twine. Just makes things easier. Okay, string is off. Let's just cut right down the center and uh, see how we did. Look at that. <laughs> that looks really nice. Beautiful edge to edge color. You get a little mild smoke ring uh, around the edges. Yeah, this is, uh, this is looking amazing. Let's move this guy out of the way. And we're just gonna cut up a couple slices. So you wanna go about a, I don't know, half an inch thick on these. It's a nice little serving size. You can tell it is super tender. All right, so we plated up the uh, beef tenderloin, just put in a nice little platter. You got the half of the uh, unsliced piece and then uh, the nice slices that we're gonna serve up. And I'm gonna take my red wine sauce and just pour it right over the top. Ooh, just a nice drizzle. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And we'll save the rest. And now we'll garnish everything with some fresh parsley, give it a, a pop of color. Ooh, look at that. Last thing to do is to uh, try this out. So I'm gonna cut myself a nice little piece. You got some of that sauce on there. Ooh, this looks really good. Oh yeah, it's super tender, has that nice mild smoky flavor. You taste the seasoning on the outside and then you get hit with the delicious wine sauce. Ooh, this is uh, absolutely delicious. That sauce really is what makes it. Cause like I said before, the tenderloin is super tender very kind of luxurious, great mouthfeel to it, but uh, not too much flavor in it. So I think that sauce really takes it up a notch. Hmm, this is delicious. So that's going to be it for this video and the end of our holiday grilling series. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Hmm, that is really good.